that 1800 level is very significant. We've had three quarterly closes above 1800. We, I don't even think we ever had a, a, a monthly close above 1800 during the last bull market. Um, so now we've had three quarterly closes above 1800 and it's carving out a bottom right here. Welcome to Inside the Markets, official podcast of thestockpulse.com. Joining me today, David Erfley, the junior miner junkie. It's juniorminerjunkie.com. He's also a Kitco contributor and an all-around smart guy. So I'm going to run through mining with him today. David, I appreciate the time as always here. Uh, a happy new year. We haven't uh, spoken in a while uh, coming off a COVID year. Give me the David Erfley 36,000 view um, of the markets right now and how you, how you see things going in the overall scheme of things. Yeah, nice to see you again, Rob. Thanks again for having me on. Yeah, it's been it's been it's been quite the week for for uh, precious metals investors. Uh, it started off with uh, a failed short squeeze attempt, and now on Thursday it's ending up with a with a, a successful gold stop run below eighteen hundred. So we've been put through the emotional roller coaster here again over the past few weeks, really, as the the market has basically become trendless as as gold attempts to carve out a bottom here along with the miners. So um, and, uh, while this is happening today, we've got gold down uh, almost $50 and it's below 1800. It looks like it's shooting uh, for that uh, 1770, 1775 level that it hit back in last November. Um, the trigger this morning was the ADP number that was better than expected. And that's before the non-farm payrolls report that comes out tomorrow. So um, I expect that non-farm payrolls report will probably also be better than expected. And, you know, they've got those computer algorithm based trades in the gold sector um, set for for uh, for uh, special uh, cells at, at different numbers and different phrases in the in the. Uh, in the in the nfp report so um if it's a better than expected number i wouldn't be surprised to see gold shoot for that 1770 1775 area but important to note right now rob is the miners are acting sold out here um we're seeing some buying coming in as the, the selling has been taking place this morning um the gdx is only down about two and a half percent or so which is about what gold is down you know, and the miners uh, usually show two to three times leverage, you know, on a, on a big down day like this, the GDX is usually down about five or six, six percent. Um, so that's interesting, you know, and a lot of these companies that I follow and I own are acting sold out. So um, this is, a, I think, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of value based investors coming in because these things have gotten really cheap. Yeah, let's uh, let's get into the, the environment here. Uh, fundamentals look good, obviously, for the metals. Uh, uh, we're just going to debate uh, uh, bailout policies and, and just keep, uh, I guess, diluting the dollar um, with the stimulus. So, so lay, lay out how you see. Like you said, you lay out some key bottoms. I think if you retrace history, and, and again, you're you're the guy who who knows this stuff. Um, go back and draw the correlation to where gold bottom last time. We talked uh, before here about when gold hit a thousand. It pulled back. It took a little while to get there before it made that big run in 08. Kind of talk about the correlation, what you see now. Yeah, uh, Rob, uh, 2008 was also an interesting uh, financial atmosphere. Um, we had the gold price pretty much signaling what was about to happen in in uh, the equity markets. Um, the gold price ran up to $1,000, kind of like it ran up to $2,000 here recently. And um, I, don't, I don't even think it closed a made a weekly close above there, maybe a weekly, but not a monthly close above a thousand. And then it didn't revisit a thousand until 18 months later, because after it hit a thousand, uh, the gold market started to sell off a bit before the financial crisis. And then gold took a, took a big dump into um, September of 2008, down to 680 from that thousand dollar level um, and uh, bottom there in September while the stock market did not bottom until March of the following year. So, so while, the, while the, the stock market was continuing to sell off, the gold market bottomed in 2008 and had a V-shaped recovery. And, um, and then once gold got back above $1,000, 18 months later, after, after it hit $1,000 for the first time, 
it didn't look back until it hit until it parabolically rose to 1945. And then once it rose to 1925, uh, 1800 was the magic number. It came back down below 1800 and then it ran up to 1800 a few times, tested it, back, it back tested it a few times. And then uh, in 2013, it gave up the ghost and just and and just went into a, a full fledged bear market. So fast forward to 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 uh, uh, right now and eight, that 1800 level is very significant. We've had three quarterly closes above 1800. We, I don't even think we ever had a, a, a monthly close above 1800 during the last bull market. Um, so now we've had three quarterly closes above 1800, and it's carving out a bottom right here. Um, and um, it gave up 1800 today, um, and uh, it gave up it gave up 1800 back in, in November, but we didn't get a monthly close below 1800. Um, it, it closed the month, I think, right at 1800 and change in November, something like that. So um, I, it's, it's really getting close to a bottom here. You know, it's, it's up in time and it's up in price. You know, we've had a six month correction here in the gold price. It's gone down about three hundred dollars while the miners have also been correcting for those six months. But the miners are, have, have, have corrected about 30 percent. But you remember, remember, Rob, the, the GDXJ went up. 180 percent in less than five months so a 30 percent correction of that 180 percent gain is is natural and also you got to factor in all that dilution that came into all these juniors that that, that, fi that financed you know all these juniors financed and most of them gave a warrant you know people once once the uh the finance becomes free trading they sell the shares and they keep the warrant so you got to factor in all that dilution all that selling and now we're coming down to an area where it's carving out a bottom here. Yeah. So you, uh, you've written some, uh, obviously right for Ketco, um, talked to an article about whipsaw uh, in, in the miners. Let, let's talk a little bit about the, about the environment here for the, for the juniors and, and, and these, and these bigger miners, um, the whipsaw effect. But if you, yeah, you, I guess, I guess guide, guide where you think it is. People obviously follow your advice, uh, pay you to do. So what are you identifying out there without giving away who you're following? How do you kind of see the overall trend for these guys? Well, sure. Well, it's 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 basically trend less right now. You know, like I said, it's carving out a bottom. You know, we've had we started off the year with with a with a whipsaw from a false breakout in in the in the miners and uh, in the gold trend. Um, you know, that very first trading day of the year, we had a fifty dollar move in gold, and um, you know. Um, we, most most thought it was off to the races from there, but it printed uh, a, a daily island reversal in the GDX for the second time during this consolidation. Once it gets it's been a downtrend line for six months, right? Uh, a few months before that, it did the same thing. You know, it had a it had a gap up above the trend, and it traded up there for a few days, and then a gap down below it to create a daily island reversal, which is which is short term bearish. And um, it happened again the first week of this year. Um, we had a hundred and fifty dollar reversal in the gold price, and um, we had we had the miners continue to sell off. And it looks to me like there's a really good chance there's a double bottom here in the miners this year. Like like I said, the miners are trading very favorably right now in accordance with this gold price being down fifty dollars today. Sure. So as we uh, uh, go through the year here again, we I think we agree that uh, that gold probably has the conditions right. Um, what uh, if you're advising people here who maybe didn't have any exposure to this market? At what at what point are we at in this market? Um, is this is this the, the the real start of the good times? False start before? I think we all believe in the dream. We we hear the 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 the, the great reset, uh, build back better. Um, they have plans for us. Uh, how, how, how do you see this year shaping up? Well, um, I see gold having another good year, but I see silver, uh, despite this failed uh, short squeeze, I see silver having a having a better year than gold like it did last year. It's still got a lot of catching up to do. You know, there's really strong resistance, as we just found out, at $30 in the silver price. Once silver gets over $30, um, then uh, I think it can run pretty quickly to uh, the 35 area. And um, I wouldn't even be surprised if it, if it touched 50 this year at some point. But um, the gold price, um, 
you know, I think uh, as far as the lows are concerned, I think the, the lowest it can go is 1690, 1700. Um, but, I, but I'm really starting to believe the miners are starting to tell me with the action today. Of course, the, the day's not over. You know, it's it's the, the COMEX is going to close here in about 10 minutes. But uh, the miners so far are saying that um, uh, gold price may double bottom here at 1770, Okay. Well, I appreciate the, the insight as always. And David, why don't you tell everyone how they can uh, keep an eye on your work? Oh, sure. Um, like you said, uh, I have a weekly column on uh, kitco.com. It comes out every Friday. And also my website is juniorminerjunkie with a Y.com, where I have a subscription-based service that um, I have a real money portfolio that uh, my subscribers uh, follow me in my trading. And uh, it's basically a teaching service. Um, I teach you how to trade this sector, risk management taxes, tax, tax, um, when to buy, when to sell, things like things of that nature. Okay, well, we'll look forward to getting back here in Q2 maybe and uh, go from there. So, Dave, appreciate the time as always. Thanks, thanks. Thanks again for having me on, Ron. Great to see you.